with that kid. His head don't work, it never did. You better not cross his path. He's a chain smoking alcoholic sociopath. Kevin was enjoying some quiet time in solitary confinement. Because he'd gotten a little too curious about what would happen if you lit a can of hairspray with a butane lighter and pointed it at one of the guards. Kevin found out that you got hit pretty hard with a nightstick and had to spend a long time in solitary confinement. Which was pretty much what he expected to happen, since that was what happened to him the last time he did it. Mr. Franklin, the prison psychiatrist, came to see Kevin in his cell. Now, Kevin, it would seem your fascination with fire has increased in the last little while. I'm curious as to its origins. Perhaps there was an event during your childhood associated with it that you'd like to discuss. You got your butane, your carotene, and your good old gasoline. Now, technically speaking, you're supposed to use the butane, but in a pinch, the other two will do. Kevin was nine years old, and his old man was teaching him how to refuel and flint a lighter so he wouldn't have to get off his fat, lazy ass and do it himself. That was the kind of thing that made sense to Kevin's dad, because it left him more free time for drinking, and because his parents go, he wasn't a very good one. Clock's ticking, boy. Kevin was trying really hard to do a good job, but he was nervous. He'd never used a lighter before, because he usually lit his own smokes off the stove. He was also pretty hungover and had a bad case of the shakes, and that sure wasn't helping. That ain't right, idiot. You best keep practicing. From that day forward, Kevin decided he'd try extra hard to learn how to work the lighter. He didn't much give a damn about sparking up smokes for his old man, but he'd sure like that explosion. And Kevin wanted to learn how to make explosions happen on purpose instead of just by accident. Kevin decided he'd go to the library and learn everything he could about fire pyrotechnics. Kevin had never been in a library before, and he was really amazed that someone had written so many books. It was pretty confusing, and he didn't know where to start looking. He recognized some of the kids from his school and decided to ask them for help. Haven't you ever heard of the Dewey Decimal System? You have to be able to read to use that, and everybody knows Kevin can't read. Didn't your parents ever teach you how to read? My dad's a doctor. Both my parents have PhDs and have written articles for the most respected literary journals in the world. My mom won the Nobel Peace Prize for her work in biophysics. Kevin really wanted to fit in, so he told the other kids that his family held the record for the number of consecutive generations of a single family to be on welfare. He figured that ought to straighten things out. The other kids all laughed. Kevin started to laugh along with them, then he realized they were just making fun of him. That was the day the other kids learned that Kevin's family had a pretty long history of street fighting as well. Children, children, that's enough. Now either you all behave and get along or your library privileges will be indefinitely suspended. Now what's the problem? Kevin told the librarian that he was trying to find some books about fire and explosions. The librarian thought it was wonderful that Kevin was so interested in science. Mostly because she was used to dealing with smart kids and not ones who were sociopathically insane. And because of this, it was beyond the comprehension of her life experience to envision that a child as young as Kevin was interested in explosions because he one day hoped to grow up and destroy many of the good things civilization had built over the years, along with a lot of the people who built them. of the Dewey Decimal System is the single greatest event in the history of mankind and will only be outdone by the return of Christ. Now, you are interested in explosives? Kevin had a hard time making sense of the books 
because they were written for people who had a strong background in science and who could read. Lucky for Kevin, though, most of them came with pictures. Kevin took the next couple of weeks off school and studied as hard as he could. Just fill a cardboard box full of gasoline and set a match to it. I promise you it'll blow up. Now, how's about giving your old pal Alan some liquor and nicotine? I'm in a hurting way. What in the name of Christ are you doing, boy? Oh, hell, he's reading. If Charlie and Phil find out about this, they ain't never gonna let me live it down. Shut your cake, hole idiot. Maybe he's gonna be the first Spencer to get his high school. All I'm saying is they better be porn booked, otherwise he's going fruity. And I ain't having no son of mine reading no books than going fruity. Come on, boy, put them books down. Daddy'll take you downtown for a whore. I don't mind one for the boy, but even think about getting one for yourself. I wouldn't have to if you'd drop a few. How's about I drop a few knuckles down your effing throat? I ain't afraid of you, Tubby. Fucking <laughs> go! You see what trouble books cause, boy? Kevin's first bomb worked out better than he'd expected. Hunting with explosives was a whole lot easier than using guns. The deer's head was stuck on so tight that Kevin couldn't get it off. He figured he'd just have to go back home and hope his parents were still sober enough to help him. Kevin finally made it back to his house. He was really relieved because he was getting pretty sick of having the head of a wild animal stuck over his because it made it really hard to smoke and drink. You don't know Jack Squat, idiot! All I'm saying is there ain't no way Planet of the Apes was based on a true story. I've been to the zoo once and ain't none of the effing apes talk. Jesus H! Okay! So it was all made up. I don't know nothing about apes. Get out of the way, Ma. Your son's very lucky to be alive. But what I want to know is just how exactly this all happened. Kevin told the doctor all about wanting to learn how to make things blow up about the library and the deer and everything. The doctor was pretty horrified, especially because Kevin's parents thought it was one of the funniest things they had ever heard and kept laughing at Kevin. I told you books weren't no good for nothing. Maybe now you'll realize who's the smart one. Your dad shot you in the head on account of you read that book. You get it? Kevin decided his parents were a whole lot smarter than he'd given them credit for, so he promised them that no matter what happened, He'd never read another book again. That a boy. Tell you what, when you get better, Daddy'll take you downtown for a whore. All right now, boys. Today we're going to learn some football skills, the greatest game ever invented. Some may tell you that honor belongs to hockey or basketball, but they're wrong. My dad says baseball is the greatest sport. Well then, he's an ignorant asshole. Maybe that's why your mom is always sleeping with other men. You're suspended, Johnny. Go home now. Any other questions? Good. Mr. Black isn't a very nice teacher. I heard he once made a boy do so many sit-ups that he started to have stomach convulsions and threw up his own spleen and died right in front of everyone. And then Mr. Black cut his head off and nailed it to the wall in the locker room. So for the rest of the year, no other boy in gym class would dare question his totalitarian approach to youth sports. The Board of Education feels that I should teach a broad curriculum of sports. I disagree. I'm going to teach football all year, every class, and you can complain all you want to your idiot liberal parents. 
and they can bitch all they want to the principal and board of education. But ain't nothing going to change because no one's got the nuts to come down here to my field and tell me difference. All right, pussies, give me ten laps. Kevin didn't much care for football. Then again, he didn't much care for any of his classes, so he usually skipped most of them and spent the day drinking and hanging out in a nearby arcade. Kevin sure wished he was playing arcade games right now. Then Kevin wished he could magically leave this world and spend the rest of his life living inside an arcade game, fighting evil and anything else that got in his way. Kevin must have been a little drunker than he normally was the day before because he'd spent the whole night passed out against his locker. The school bell had woken him up and that meant it was time for gym class. Kevin figured he'd better get out of there right quick so he wouldn't have to spend another class with Mr. Black. First one changed. Good job, Spencer. Too bad the rest of you ladies aren't as eager as Kevin. Hurry up and get changed. Last one out on the field gets used as a tackling dummy. <laughs> You got till three. One, two, three. Get him, get him, get him, get him. <laughs> so I said to the guy, I ought to get the ribs for free on account of him taking longer than 30 minutes. You're thinking about pizza. That don't work with ribs. I weren't done talking. Kevin was having trouble at school. Mr. Black was really mean and he frightened all the kids. Kevin really wanted to ask his parents for some advice, but he wasn't too sure this was a good time. It don't work with ribs, you dumb bastard. How'd you like me to work your ribs, fatty? Bring it on, you stupid unemployed son of a bitch. Kevin wasn't big on family traditions, so he was getting pretty sick and tired of watching his parents throwing haymakers every night at dinner. Kevin figured he'd try and change the subject before they really got into it. Kevin told his parents about Mr. Black and asked them what he should do. It's like a life test, boy. If you quit, that means you're a failure. Hey, I quit football. You got cut because you were no good. That's because I couldn't handle my booze as good back then as I can now. The only thing you ever handled back then was yourself. Yeah, well, that's because the lineup to get to you was too long. Your friends didn't mind waiting then, and they still don't. What the hell did I tell you about banging my friends? Well, I wouldn't have to if you wasn't impotent. I ain't never had no problems with the hooker, so it must be seeing you naked what does it. How about that, Tubby? How's about we see if you still got a glass jar, asshole? All right, pussies. Today we're working on skill development. Little things win football games. Special teams, focus, and hitting the other team's quarterback in the knees so he's left as a crippled shadow of his former self. Today, we're going to work on kicking. <laughs> Spencer! I like your enthusiasm. What I don't like is you, Donald, because you can't take a hit. That's why you get to hold the ball while all the other kids have fun trying to kick it through the goalposts. Line up, you little pansies! Oh, that's a real nice kick, pussy. Why don't you take a moment to think about how bad you suck? Tell you what, you can do it while you're giving me 40 laps. Nice try, Donovan. Tell you what, why don't you pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and go get some pom-poms. You got all the makings of a cheerleader fruitcake. Next! Shouldn't you be at home watching Star Trek? Start running! It was Kevin's turn and he was pretty nervous. He'd never been good at sports because of all the smoking and drinking, and he figured there was no way he would be able to kick a football that far. Kevin figured he was looking at doing some laps no matter how hard he kicked the ball, 
so he figured there was no point in trying and decided he'd just go ahead and kick the kid holding the ball in the side of the head as hard as he could. Kevin was pretty upset. He must have been drunker than he thought because he'd missed the kid's head by a mile. I want to talk to you, Spencer. The rest of you pussies can do laps except for Donald. You keep holding the ball. But we didn't get a turn. Hey, that's back talk. You're expelled. Go get changed back into your dress and go home. Let's see if you can do that again, Spencer. Kevin was really excited to be singled out from the rest of the class for his athletic ability because that meant he was going to get another chance to try and kick Donald in the head. Keep going, boy! Every year, the Canadian Football League has a national field goal kicking competition. Kids from all across Canada compete and the winner gets a $10,000 check for college or university. Since you ain't bright enough to go anyway, I figure we can split the check 70-30 in my favour, and everyone's a winner. Kevin didn't know what to say. He was going to tell Mr. Black that he wasn't even trying to hit the football. But then he got to thinking that $6,000 was a lot of money, mostly because he'd never done too well in math. Before Kevin could compete in the national finals, he had to win the city championship and the provincial championship. Kevin was pretty nervous because he didn't like doing things in front of large crowds of people, because he sucked at most things and usually just embarrassed himself. Before his turn, Kevin had a few hits off the bottle of rye he'd stolen from the teacher's lounge just to take the edge off. Our next competitor, representing H.L. Lucas High, is young Kevin Spencer. Just like we practice, Spencer. I've even got Donald to hold the ball for you, just like always. Kevin lined up the ball and concentrated as hard as he could. Six grand sure was a lot of money. Then Kevin got to thinking. Money doesn't mean a whole lot if you steal everything anyway, so he figured screw the competition. Kevin decided he was going to see if he could kick Donald's head clean off, just like in his dream. Kevin won the city championship, and now he was competing in the provincial championship. It was down to Kevin and one other boy. The other boy had missed his try from 40 yards, and if Kevin made his kick, then he was going to get a chance to compete for the $10,000 national title. This here is a walk in the park for you, Kevin. Just focus on the ball and follow through. I know you like to drink a little beforehand, so here, I brought you some vodka. <laughs> Let's go, Kevin. You can do it. Kevin wasn't used to his classmates being nice to him, so he figured Donald was teasing him. Kevin wanted to kick Donald in the head more than he'd ever wanted anything in his whole life. Kevin took one last good luck mouthful of vodka and ran towards Donald. Then a ten grand ain't thick thousand, idiot. How would you know? Put it in park, cow. I'm talking to the lunatic. It's more like only five or something, you fat drunk. Either way, it's a lot of scratch. We could stay loaded for a couple of months easy and still have enough for smoke and bail for one of us. The national championship was in three days and Kevin was already nervous. He didn't like crowds, and this time he was going to have to compete during halftime of the Grey Cup which meant that he was going to have to be in front of almost 3,000 people. The family's counting on you, boy. So don't screw it up by getting tanked or nothing. Kevin didn't feel like talking about it anymore, so he went out back to his favorite tree to have a few. It was the big day. The organizers of the competition have flown all the contestants and their parents to Calgary for the big event. All the kids at Kevin's school had organized a fundraiser 
so that Donald and his family could fly to Calgary with the Spencers, because Mr. Black said that Donald was Kevin's good luck charm, and that if they didn't, then he would personally kick each and every one of them in the ass so hard they'd have to take off their hat to go to the bathroom. One minute to halftime, kids. Good luck to all of you, and may the best boy win. All right, Spencer. According to my scouting report, the longest kick any kid in this room has made is 42 yards. That's sweet F.A. compared to you. So all you have to do is stay focused and kick that ball like you do every day in practice. If you do that, we're both going to walk out of here rich men. Ladies and gentlemen, for your halftime entertainment, we present some future CFLers. Could you please put your hands together and welcome the provincial champions of the field goal kicking competition. Today they will be competing for the coveted title of national champion, along with a check for $10,000. Man, just think of what you could do with that kind of money. Our first contestant hails from the province of Ontario. Good luck, Kevin Spencer. Kevin stood frozen in fear. The whole crowd was silent. Even Kevin's parents would come out to watch because the manager of the bar had thrown them out for fighting. Come on, Kevin, you can do it. Focus, boy. It ain't no different than practice, except for the 10 grand. Just do what you always done. Because Kevin really wanted to do well and win the prize, he hadn't had a single drink all day. It was the first time in years that Kevin had been sober, and he was amazed at how well he could walk without falling down and pick up things on the first try. Kevin took a deep breath and began his kicking routine by visualizing what it would be like to kick Donald's head clean off. Then he counted as high as he could, which was usually around seven. Then Kevin ran towards the ball as fast as he could. Ended. 